Okay, well, it's all very well to define a stationary distribution as one that solves pi equals pi p, but there are two big questions that we're going to want to know the answers to, and that is, first, does there always exist a stationary distribution? Or when does there exist a stationary distribution? The second question is, if there does exist a stationary distribution, is it unique or not? Or might there be many stationary distributions? And the next theorem will answer those two questions. OK, so here is that theorem. And it starts, consider an irreducible Markov chain. So note that this is a theorem about Markov chains where all the states are in the same class. We'll come to that back to that point in a moment. Then we have two cases. If it's irreducible and positive recurrent, then a stationary distribution exists, is unique, and it gives us an expression for it. It's the reciprocal of the expected return time. On the other hand, if the Markov chain is irreducible and either null recurrent or transient, then there's no stationary distribution. So note that the difference here is between positive recurrent exists, null recurrent or transient doesn't exist. Note that this applies to irreducible Markov chains. So if you look at uh, the previous examples from the last subsection of the notes, the, there was the no claims discount one and there was the one that we did in the video, uh, the previous subsection, uh, those Markov chains were obviously irreducible because every state communicated with each other. And they were positive recurrent because every finite irreducible Markov chain is positive recurrent because uh, uh, there's only one class, so it's closed, and finite closed classes are positive recurrent. But in the previous subsection, we were irreducible and positive recurrent, which meant that the stationary distribution exists. Well, we knew that because we found it. But we could have known that the stationary distribution exists even without finding it, because this theorem says it exists. As it happens, we did find it. Not only that, the stationary distribution is unique. So when we found the stationary distribution for those examples in the previous subsection, we found the only stationary distribution. There wasn't like another one hiding anywhere. And plus, we get the expected return times, mu i being 1 over pi i for free. So if someone had said, oh, what's the expected return time? We could have just taken 1 divided by the stationary distribution and found them out straight away without having to do all the conditioning on the first step hitting time stuff. So that's kind of nice for us. Note, however, that this theorem is only talking about irreducible Markov chains. So it's perhaps worth considering what if it's not irreducible What if our Markov chain is not irreducible? Well, the distinction in the theorem was that a stationary distribution existed when the chain was positive recurrent. So what we want to do is look at whether there are positive recurrent classes, because positive recurrent classes are going to tell us about existence of uh, stationary distributions. So if there's zero positive recurrent classes, well, there's no hope, is there? Because a stationary distribution will exist on a positive recurrent class, but we haven't got any. So it's clear there that there's going to be no stationary distribution because there's no positive recurrent class uh, for it to be supported on. What if there's one, by which I mean exactly one, positive recurrent class? Well, if there's exactly one positive recurrent class, then we can make a stationary distribution just on that class that's zero over everywhere else. Right. And on that positive recurrent class, there'll be a unique stationary distribution. So there'll be a unique stationary distribution, and it'll be on the positive recurrent class, by which I mean that it'll be zero on all the transient or null recurrent classes. On the other hand, what if there's two or more 
positive recurrent class is. Well, now any one of the positive recurrent classes could have a can have a stationary distribution on it. And we can even take like half of the stationary distribution on one of the classes plus half of the stationary distribution on one of the other classes. So there will be a stationary distribution. So a stationary distribution does exist, but it's not unique. But it's not unique. There will be loads of stationary distributions hanging around. So although the theorem told us about irreducible Markov chains, we can actually work out what goes on for a non-irreducible Markov chain by looking at positive recurrent classes. And whether they're zero, no stationary distribution, one, unique stationary distribution, or two or more recurrent classes, non-unique stationary distribution. Let's look at an example. This example here. I think it's clear that this Markov chain is not irreducible, right? Because we can chop it up into classes one and two, which communicate with each other, and classes three and four, which communicate to each other. So, you know, this Markov chain looks something like this. One and two are communicating, and then three and four are communicating. There's no nothing going in between. And it's clear that both of these are positive recurrent, right? Because they're closed and finite. So that means that there will be a stationary distribution, but it won't be unique. Let's try and see what happens if we try and solve for it. So if we put pi equals pi p, then we get, well, pi 1 is working down the first column, so that's half pi 1 plus half pi 2 tells us that pi 1 equals pi 2. The second column gives us pi 2 equals half pi 1 plus half pi 2. Oh, but that gives us pi 1 equals pi 2 as well. So in fact, we've just been given the same piece of information twice. Okay, keep going. Third column, pi 3 equals quarter pi 3 plus half pi 4, which means that... Uh, Take that over, multiply everything up by 4, gives just 3 pi 3 equals 2 pi 4, I believe. And lastly, working down the fourth column, pi 4 equals 3 quarters pi 3 plus half pi 4. Uh, take the 3 quarters over, multiply everything up by 2. Oh, that gives us a... Sorry, take the half over and multiply everything up by 4. That gives us the same thing again, doesn't it? It gives us another... 3 pi 3 equals 2 pi 4. And so we've got one equation involving pi 1 and pi 2, one equation involving pi 3 and pi 4, and the normalising condition, pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 equals pi 4. But this isn't enough, right? We've got 1, 2, 3 equations in four variables. So that's not enough to solve. And you can probably see how it just depends how much of this 1 in the normalising condition you want to give over to the pi 1 and the pi 2, or what proportion you want to give over to the pi 3 and the pi 4. So if pi 1 plus pi 2 equals, I don't know, alpha, say, then pi 3 plus pi 4, to satisfy the normalising condition, must add up to the other 1 minus alpha. Since pi 1 equals pi 2 and they add up to alpha, that gives us uh, half alpha and half alpha. Pi 3 and pi 4 have to add up to 1 minus alpha and have 3 pi 3 equals 2 pi 4. Uh, moments thought should tell you that that gives uh, 2 fifths 1 minus alpha, 3 fifths 1 minus alpha. So that is a stationary distribution for any alpha between 0 and 1, obviously. It just depends how you share out the kind of probability mass between the pi 1, pi 2 half of the chain and the pi 3, pi 4 half of the chain. So in fact, we have an infinite number of stationary distributions there but we could still find them in the same way by solving pi equals pi p.